today we are going to be creating an abstract floating effect inside of Maya by using simple constraints and uh, some fields and that's it so let's get into it now the first thing I want to do is go to Windows general editor and if you go to your content browser you'll notice that you have tons and tons of model and some presets completely inside inbuilt of Maya now you can completely use this this is free to use and you can use it for anything that you want now if I go to something like maybe props you'll find you have this kind of amazing props and if you go to clothing you'll find this amazing object so we are going to be using this instead of default meshes you can use that as well totally depends on you so I'm gonna uh, simply uh, select this and drag it on my viewport and I'm gonna select a couple of more stuff here like a cap and uh, I think some goggles and I think that will be good enough uh, I can also use one of a default primitives as well so if you'll notice that the cap is still here but you won't find the other objects because they are not exactly centered so what I'm gonna do is make sure their center pivot is turned on if it's not then you'll have a problem like this so go to simple uh, I guess the center pivot is in uh, modify center pivot you can also select it from here and I'm gonna go to my front view and just bring this down I'm gonna do the same with this goggles I'm gonna center pivot this and bring this down okay so let's uh, zoom in so this is our helmet I'm gonna scale this down we have our cap let's scale this down and then we have goggles now one thing with these goggles are there are multiple parts here so I'm gonna simply combine them by going to mesh and combine just so we have a single object to deal with so let's scale this down to something right about there okay so this looks pretty good and then we have our default mesh and I can also select one more primitive just so we have something to work with and I'm going to select all of these and apply a simple Lambert material and that's it so I'm going to select all of these and also delete and freeze transform delete history and freeze transform and just so we don't have multiple groups defining that all right so we have something like this now the first thing I'm going to do is simply select all of these and change my menu to FX from here I'm going to select all of these and make an active rigid body and that's it so from here we have an active rigid body we can apply gravity and so on but the one thing we are going to deal with is the Newton and Newton is uh, as we have already covered every field there is Newton is something that works as an attractor so it's going to attract each and every primitive there is so I'm going to go to my fields and add a Newton field so by default Newton is in the middle in the center of the grid so I'm going to just bring this up so wherever your Newton is uh, all the primitives are going to follow that point so I'm going to just bring this somewhere closer towards the nucleus and that's it so if I play this now now you have something like this so all the primitives are colliding and you have something like this so I'm going to increase my frame range here just so we have a bigger frame range to play and now you have something like this so from here you can just simply capture this and I'm gonna hit 3 on my keyboard just to make them smooth and you can go to your camera and bring this back and let me just okay something like this and bring this back as well alright so from here you can uh, turn on your film gate and make sure your resolution is somewhere about 1k you can choose any type of resolution that you want I'm gonna go with the 1k and uh, from here I can just set this up and I can take maybe a sky dome light and a simple directional light so I'm gonna scale this up and rotate this just so we have something for the shadows and let me just reset my pivot point orientation and we are good to go so I'm gonna go to my Arnold and hit IPR okay so as you can see we have something like this now so you can create a backdrop from here uh, you can take a simple plane and I'm gonna move out of my camera here and let's pause this close this and let's close our film gate as well so I'm gonna go to my outline and select uh, wherever my plane is and let's scale this up and let's rotate this to about 90 degrees and scale this up and I'm just gonna reset this 
Okay, so we don't need that many subdivision. So I'm gonna make this one and turn off the grid. So now you have a pretty interesting scene and uh, you can pretty much animate this if you want. So this is my main camera. And from here you can just move on. You can add uh, some more, you can say fields if you want to create something a little bit more extra with this. Uh, what you can also do if your overall geometry is not attracting towards the Newton, what you can do is increase the number of magnitude. So this is the overall strength of your Newton. So I'm going to make this something like 20 and now you have much greater strength. So don't uh, increase the value too much. Otherwise it will just throw all the objects away. So now you have something like this. Don't worry about the object. They, they will eventually come back. But as I said, don't increase the amount a bit too much. Otherwise they'll just be flying around. So you have something like this now and slowly they'll come back. Now from here you can do a couple of more things if you want. Uh, I'm going to turn the value to something like maybe a 10 and uh, I'm going to select all of these and maybe add a uh, turbulence if you want and uh, you can use that as well. So if you want to just create something a bit more extra, let me just deselect this and turbulence. All right, there you go. Now you have some extra randomness. Now you have a bit more noisy pattern going on. So you can use that as well. So this is pretty interesting, a uh, small thing and not too fancy, but uh, if you want to do this with default primitives, what you can do is you can just simply take some spheres and just duplicate these. And from here, select these. I'm going to make this something like a 500 and go to fill the solver, active rigid body. And by default, they'll uh, return to the original origin, which is the center of the grid. If it doesn't, that means uh, the original settings of your, or you can say the default parameter that you have set your active rigid body is not in this position. So I've set my initial position on one value, which is the center of the grid. But if that, that's not what's happening with your rigid body, that's completely fine. So I'm going to select all of these and take a Newton again. So now you'll have something like this. So you can do some amazing stuff with this. You can also just to add a bit more randomization, you can just change the overall scaling of these spheres. And from here you can play this. So now you have a bit more randomization. So pretty cool stuff. So have fun playing around with this and I'll see you in the next video.